Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, to, uh, my name is Juan Flores, and I will start in a couple of minutes here. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, just small housekeeping items. If you don't have a question, strongly encourage you to put them in the Q&A. And also, this is a recorded webinar, so all participants will be able to receive today's presentation along with the recording of today's webinar. So by all means, ask the, the hard questions to, to Mr. Juan. He'll be more than happy to answer it for you. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Thank you, Jesus, I appreciate that. Well, with that, uh, again, uh, uh, happy to uh, be on the call uh, with you uh, this, uh, this afternoon. And uh, what I'm gonna be going over is a nice little synopsis of our program, the Community Navigator Program, and then specifically entrepreneurship, uh, which I think in heart, everybody has a little bit of entrepreneurship inside of them. Uh, but we're gonna be going and doing a deeper dive of what that is. Uh, and then just a little nice backdrop of the SPDC, what we do here and what we provide for you um, and an SBA in general, right? So why don't we just jump into it um, and uh, we'll look at uh, the Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program. You know, uh, this is very unique. You know, uh, as some of you may know, SBDC provides technical assistance on uh, training uh, to entrepreneurs. Um, you provide one-to-one uh, -one business assistance, uh, outreach assistance, and then, of course, you know, connectivity, small businesses, networking, and resources. But the great thing about the SBDC is we're local. Uh, when I say local, Miami-Dade. Uh, so we really have a good uh, uh, plethora of people that we work with that we could connect you with, um, investment uh, uh, banks, uh, you know, uh, lending institutions, so on and so forth. Um, a, the Computer Navigator Program was established uh, by the Rescue Plan in uh, 2021, and it really looked at uh, helping small businesses and economic recovery. You know, at, at these times of, uh, you know, for the past couple of years with COVID and, and some of the challenges we experienced with rising uh, uh, prices, uh, not just for homes, but just uh, with everything uh, that we purchase and, and buy now. You know, if you look at it from the business component, you know, uh, that's materials too, right? That's uh, uh, lumber, um, wiring, you know, depending on your trade, it's an area that's, uh, that's becoming more and more uh, challenging these days, right? Uh, the program is, co is comprised of the lead hub and center of the network and spoke. Uh, our partners in the scope are uh, the ones that you see in front of you, the Miami-Dade, uh, EDC, uh, South Florida, uh, uh, Aspera, uh, Branches, uh, Startup FIU, uh, Ascendus USC, and then uh, Miami-Dade, um, you know, is all the partners that we have working with us, uh, including the Chamber of Commerce. So uh, you're in good spirits and in, in, in good uh, partnership uh, with these in, uh, other organizations that we partner up with. Um, a little bit about the business navigator as well as it relates to the navigator partners with specialty targeting as it relates to minority owned businesses, uh, women owned businesses, veteran owned businesses. You know, these are the uh, organizations that really help us leverage, especially in our area. Uh, if you think about the 305, you think about Miami-Dade, and I'll, I'll go into this, a, into this a little later, but as it relates to uh, uh, one of the highest areas for entrepreneurship, uh, not only in the state of Florida, but nationally. Um, and it's, I, I think it's a crossbreed of a lot of things to just the people that uh, are attracted to uh, the city. Uh, it's our international flair. And also to it, as it relates to uh, the kinds of people in the trades that we have here specifically, right? Um, a little bit about myself, uh, you know, I recently started to, with SBDC, you know, happy to be in the program. I have always, uh, the last couple of uh, uh, weeks, and months, I've been uh, really taken back by the caliber of people that we have in our uh, arsenal of, of folks. So uh, if you don't like me, it's okay. <laughs> There's plenty of other people we, we can uh, get in touch with. Uh, uh, if it's on the loan side, if it's on the uh, business planning side. Uh, or just financial planning too. You know, we have folks that can help you with this. Uh, my area of expertise is more on the transportation logistics side. Uh, 20 years uh, in this industry as it relates to working, say, government, uh, private industry, uh, and internationally too. Uh, did my undergrad at uh, Purdue, and I went on to do my MBA, and then uh, my, my focus in logistics. 
Um, and then I went as far as to do my PhD uh, in business administration. Um, my goal here is quite, uh, quite simple as it relates to assisting and inspiring veteran entrepreneurs. So some of it uh, you may uh, uh, be very uh, attuned to already. I know I have a slew of all kinds of people. I promise to uh, do a nice little spread of areas, both for our beginning entrepreneurs and our more seasoned folks. Uh, but uh, it always surprises me. Sometimes the basic stuff, the uh, the, the 101 stuff is always the, the classic stuff, right? That we have to always have to go back and visit. Um, and also to uh, discussion for entrepreneurs on what it will take to be successful in business, right? And that's something that we do here uh, SBDC is have that collaboration with you, that discussion. Uh, it's just not throwing uh, uh, you know facts and figures at you, but actually sitting down, you know, uh, looking at uh, the numbers, brass tacks, and, and seeing how we can help in various ways, right? Again, my objective: uh, discuss entrepreneurship, uh, what makes successful entrepreneurs, and strategies, right? I don't want to uh, over glorify the strategies, but it is. It's very much. Uh, a strategy as it relates to how we maneuver in this uh, new area, right? Uh, is it uh, financial planning? Is it business planning? Is it uh, working more specifically with uh, international companies? And if you see uh, here in Miami-Dade, uh, by far we have a, a majority of the Spanish banks located here, financial paper, these sorts of things that uh, are always critical for this area. Um, a disclaimer also to, you know, uh, these, uh, the SBDC team, you know, are helping to advise on the business, but, you know, for the more complicated areas, we always advise you to go to a tax professional or seek a legal counsel. We can help you with this as well, too, uh, but because uh, people are operating level, different levels of um, uh, their business, you know, some starting, some are seasoned, you know, uh, 15, 20 year veterans in this business, right? Uh, so getting started, uh, uh, where do we start? Well, you know, we'll start very easily as it relates to, you know, what is an entrepreneur, right? Uh, and if you look at the textbook, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, framing, retail, uh, manufacturing, um, uh, or the service sectors, or, you know, these are areas where you find business people, right, and find their successes in taking risk, right? The operative word is risk as it relates to um, what these people are kind of gambling with, right? As it relates to the future, their funds, uh, maybe sometimes borrowed uh, funds. Uh, these are areas that we're always looking at uh, in, the, uh, in the game of entrepreneurship, right? I think uh, one of the people that said it best, you know, Thomas Edison, you know, if you're, you know, the reason why I have the light bulb here as it relates to, if I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways uh, that don't work, right? And part of entrepreneurship is failure, right? You know, you kind of take it in, take it out of where to go, where to focus on and areas that uh, you can improve on, right? And that takes time. Um, you know, famous entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, the one I know uh, very closely because um, when I was in school, you know, we always talked about Fred Smith. You know, Fred Smith, as it relates to, if you haven't heard the story, you know, stop me, but uh, uh, he was a young student at Yale. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think he was um, uh, not from Tennessee, he was from one of the Southern states, but he uh, 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 got a ride to, to Yale and he was in a famous economics course. And he came up with the idea of uh, FedEx, right? And uh, his economics professor came back to him you know, and uh, as he proposed the idea for FedEx and his economics course, and uh, his professor, you know, told, uh, told Mr. Smith, uh, novel idea, but, you know, this will never work, Mr. Smith, because we have something called the United States Postal Service. People will not pay, you know, um, a higher price uh, to get their packages delivered. Well, we know the end of that story <laughs> and how that came to be, but you know, we, we did find that, you know, as, as it relates to uh, a disruptor, very much so in the parcel business, because that was pretty much a government led initiative. But if you can do it faster, leaner, meaner, uh, and if you can uh, promise something by a particular time, uh, two day, three day delivery, uh, that's a real thing. Um, you know, in supply chain logistics, we really focus on that. And if you look at South Florida, this is pretty much the heart of uh, not only uh, uh, you know, shipments and goods movement, uh, but to the Americas, you know, what that relationship is to uh, California, to China, what that relationship is to Texas, to Mexico, 
uh, is the same relationship it is from um, uh, Florida to the Americas. So we have that really symbolic relationship, right? Um, entrepreneurs launch businesses for many reasons, right? Uh, sometimes it's opportunity that they see, uh, potential profit, uh, uh, independence, right? As it relates to not having to work for a, a major employer, uh, but uh, you know, doing something on their own, right? And that has challenges in itself. Uh, but the, the, the fun fact here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as it relates to Miami-Dade, has the highest percentage of microbusinesses right, uh, you know, give or take a couple of points, but, you know, representing about 80, 81% of businesses in the county, right, that's humongous as it relates to, you know, like types of people that he are here, which I really think drives the entrepreneurship and, and, and engagement, right, because you can find like-minded people, right, um, you know, when it looks, when you're looking at successful entrepreneurs, right, uh, very much self-disciplined, self-directed, you know, uh, self Nurturing, what I mean by that, you know, sometimes you have to lick your own wounds. You know, sometimes this business is not uh, for the light at heart. And uh, it, sometimes rejection it will be the majority of what you hear the first, second, or third year. Uh, but uh, this level of tolerance, I think, that uh, an entrepreneur has to have, I think, is critical, right, for the, or his or her survival. And if that sounds like you, well, then you're in the right, uh, uh, you're listening to the, to the right presentation. Uh, but also to going back to the city, you know, uh, Miami uh, is always one of those top 25 cities as it relates to number one spot for a small business, right? Uh, and again, if you look at the number of businesses here, you know, last I checked a couple of months ago, about 82,000 um, uh, small businesses employ about 52, 50% uh, of Miami-Dade County. That's half of the county that's in in, in uh, employed by uh, small businesses, ladies and gentlemen. We always think about the big companies as it relates to uh, employment, um, but also, uh, you know, half of that uh, is small business, right? So we look also where uh, to learn about entrepreneurship, you know, uh, besides the WWW, besides the SBDC, you know, uh, there are various other areas too, as it relates to, of course, your technical schools, your colleges, right? Some of you have, uh, have ventured out maybe taken a couple of business courses and found out uh, uh, that there is avenues and there's uh, that, you know, resources there that you can leverage, right? Uh, you know, the old school as it relates to gaining experience, right? Typically, you know, you wanna do three or five years, you know, three years in your belt, you know, one year to understand the industry, another year to practice, and then the third year maybe to implement, right? It, it takes, um, unless you're really quick and you know the industry. Uh, but it takes time, right? You just can't uh, shake and bake, but, uh, you know, unless you're uh, in a very unique situation and a very unique time, and that happens all the time, you know, think of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, internet boom and how that came to be. Uh, also to uh, uh, serve as an apprentice, right? Now, some of you might say, well, Juan, that's, that's nice, but I'm, I'm 60 years old, I'm not going to become an apprentice, right? You don't really have to, you know, sometimes it's following people in a particular industry, right? Is it a side hustle? Is it working with a colleague or a friend that you've always admired and following him or her? That in itself is an apprenticeship, if you think about it, and a way of engaging and learning, right? Uh, because it, uh, some of us not can, can go to school full time, right? But there's various way, ways of learning it, right? Um, uh, by a colleague or, or a mentor, right? Uh, idea to opportunity, the idea of good opportunity is marked by a lot of areas as it relates to uh, market need, right, as it relates to um, is there a need in the market for a particular product or service, right, as many as you know here in South Florida as much of a service industry, is it scalable as it relates to skills, experience, and resources, resources being, you know, what's around you, um, uh, you know, can, do I have people that have the technical background and knowledge to help me with my idea, right? Uh, poor is generating profit, right? The reasonable price uh, is still king, right? In this challenging time that we work uh, in as it relates to trying to get the, the best price, the lowest price, right? For the consumer, for the client, for the customer, right? It, it is something that uh, we drive uh, and to compete with, right? Uh, and because we live in a global market, right, and I'm just not just saying that in general globalization, but, you know, if you look at Miami and the tip of the spear, if you think, you know, to the Americas, uh, the expansion of the Panama Canal, and just 
the enormous amount of international influence, right, really makes it a, a, a kind of a, a beacon for international uh, business, right? And then these windows of opportunity that we see that come up uh, every once in a while, you know, as terrible as COVID uh, was for many of us, uh, there was opportunities for other people to really excel and to really provide services to the people that uh, did not have them, right? And then, you know, is it sustainable, right? Will this kind of, you know, is it a one hit wonder or will this go to the, you know, second, third or fourth year, right? Those are the things that we always have to take into consideration as it relates to uh, will this happen, right? As it relates to, you know, my business being profitable, you know, my business, um, um, you know, having a team of employers, employees, right, uh, uh, service you, right? Uh, successful startups, right? We, we know about the big ones, Amazons, the Apples, right? And the Walmarts. And we know that, you know, a lot of these places come from humble beginnings. You know, I think at the end, we always hear about the, you know, how these have become, you know, Fortune 500 companies, you know, but you know, if you look at the beginnings of this, uh, of the companies, you know, if you think of Amazon, a bookseller, right? You know, I still remember buying books, you know, because I could get them dirt, dirt cheap uh, because uh, the bookstore was charging me an arm and a leg and my first child, right? You know, three, 500 bucks for a book. Uh, but when you have a platform like that, you know, that not only sells books, but, you know, a colleague of them, you know, told them later, like, why don't you sell all this stuff, right? And that really has changed the whole way of how we uh, do this sort of thing, right? Uh, successful startups, uh, strategies, right, as it relates to, uh, and then going back to, you know, uh, you know, the COVID, uh, you know, as using it as a, as a, uh, um, you know, an example, right? You know, I always take the, 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 the component of the supply chain, right, as it relates to, you know, um, were things coming from China? Were they coming from Vietnam, Malaysia, Mexico? Well, we saw the whole dynamic how, you know, China was closed down, you know, manufacturing, you know, mass had to be created. Who was doing it? Well, some, some of it came from here in the States, some of it came into Mexico, you know, other countries popped up, you know, Vietnam, Malaysia, um, you know, that uh, provided services, right? So, you know, these uh, competitive advantages, you know, these things in the marketplace that uh, disruptors, if you will, that do happen, that I think an entrepreneur has to be very cognizant about, has to be listening, right? Reading the tea leaves, so, so to speak, right? Uh, successful startup strategies, you know, uh, do you have a business idea uh, that will disrupt the marketplace, right? Uh, you know, I'm old school when it comes to this, pen to paper, right? You know, sometimes jotting, uh, these things down and, and kind of getting an idea of how to frame it up. You know, eventually this becomes a business plan, a strategy, if you will, right? Um, but looking at uh, uh, pen to paper and writing it down, right, as it relates to, you know, what are my uh, areas of focus for funding, right? Is, is it from a family member? Is it an angel investor? Is it a traditional loan, right? Um, you know, choose a legal business structure, right? You know, is it an LLC? Is it, you know, um, am I going incorporated, right? These sorts of things that, you know, uh, are the, are really the, the, the key areas of how we start a business and start thinking about a business, right? Uh, which really starts with me, myself and I, right? As it relates to, you know, you have, you can have a partnership, but, you know, these sorts of strategic, um, mandates, if you will, right? Of, you know, how am I going to go about this? What am I going to do? You know, you have to have that really screwed on tightly. Uh, if you're going to present to stakeholders, a, a banker, um, you know, angel investors, what have you, right? You have to have a good understanding of what you're delivering, what the idea is, what the strategy is. When it's complicated, right? Sometimes not everybody can understand what you're doing or the concept of it, right? Uh, four keys of starting up upright, uh, up you know, is the idea, of course, right? We have to have that uh, idea as it relates to what makes me different. You know, everybody has a good idea, but the, then the question becomes, or you know, how am I going to implement it, right? The planning strategy, you know, it uh, usually we see this in, in a business plan. You know, this tight, this it takes time, right? It takes about a year, a couple of years, depending, uh, you know, how much thought you give into this as it relates to the structure of your business, the operations, the back house, you know, uh, the equipment that you need, these sorts of things, the financing, and then the launch, right? Uh, you know, this is something uh, easier said than done, but, you know, the planning of your business is critical. You know, key actions in this area include understanding your market, 
right? And the market, as we know, is oh, ever changing, right? We have to be cognizant of that, you know, every once in a while, you know, come up for air and see what's changing, you know, what's uh, what's hip, what's what's cool, what's what's um, what's going on with the with the young folks, right? Are the winds uh, changing, right? Sometimes I think we can be sometimes, you know, um, uh, kind of set in our ways, but an entrepreneur is very much mindful of all these changings uh, in the economy, in the marketplace, right? And how we deliver, how we package, how we receive information, right? Um, developing a business model that works best for you, right? Uh, in, this, in this day and age of working remotely, working from home, uh, who ever thought that, you know, majority now of folks would be uh, working remotely, right? It was a nice afterthought in business, but uh, that has become a reality. Again, COVID really kind of changed and disrupted the way we did business, right? Where we were mandated almost literally, if you think about it, uh, to work uh, from home. And then, you know, uh, creating a business plan, right? Business plans, you know, it, they, they call them all sorts of things. Is it strategy? Is it strategies? Is it implementation plans? You know, it, it, it's, it depends, right? As it relates to where you are with your strategy, right? We talk about the marketplace, right? You know, and uh, in what works and what doesn't work. An old uh, boss of mine, you know, uh, when I was a project manager, he used to tell me, you know, uh, Flores, keep it simple, you know, look three areas and three areas only, uh, which I think is very applicable in entrepreneurship. Your scope, your schedule, and your budget, right? What is the scope? What am I looking at? What am I doing? What does the scope say? You know, what is the objective, right? The schedule. You know, is it a Gantt chart? Is it, you know, is it a couple of months? Is it a year, you know, that you want to plan it out? Uh, well, you know, Juan, I don't know. You know, I, I you know, it's, I'm just starting this. Well, you don't have to know, but you can sketch it out as it relates to, I'd like to be here in the next six months next to the year, right? Sketch it out. You know, you're always going to adjust it, right? And then the budget, right? The budget is critical <laughs> because, you know, sometimes there's nothing in the budget, right? But uh, as, it, uh, as it relates to building capital, uh, investing, right? Is it a is it a local loan from a, a local bank? Is it a, a loan from a mom and dad? Is it a, a loan from a brother and sister? Who knows, right? Uh, but uh, looking at the various avenues of funding, right? Collateral, right? You know, uh, maybe selling that vehicle, maybe selling that uh, home of yours, and uh, taking the profits and, and, and doubling down in uh, a business that you are very passionate about, right? Understanding the marketplace, you know, this is a, a, a critical one too. I, you know, looking, uh, some of you may know the 7-Eleven, you know, um, uh, storefronts, right? But, you know, this is very unique as it relates to where you are. You know, if you think about a 7-Eleven, you know, picture it, if you will, but, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, you're grabbing snacks, you know, drinks, uh, you know, little things that you may need, candy bars, you know. But depending where you are in the world, right, you know, uh, 7-Eleven, you know, fits a different mold for different kinds of people in different regions, right? And if you ventured out, you know, 7-Eleven uh, in Indonesia, it's very different from Taiwan, it's very different from the United States, right? You know, you go to the Taiwan, you know, because of the, the bicycle use, right? There's a service uh, for bicycles, right? As it relates to repairs and, and, and all these sorts of things, right? Uh, more than 3,000 and less than 100 square meters or floor space, so you have to really maximize the space, right? Uh, so these are things that you know we have to be very mindful of. You know what works in one place might not work in another place, right? You know I, we see this a lot in the Americas, restaurants and ideas that maybe don't transverse very well in the United States, and vice versa too. Um, that we have to be very cognizant about. So understanding the marketplace is a big one. Um, also to the experience uh, with a market by working in existing businesses and networking. Uh, with industry, you know, it's always great if you can to kind of uh, get into this uh, doing uh, jobs similar in your industry, right? You know, uh, I'll take my uh, experience as it relates to working in transportation, you know, understanding uh, how transportation is done in government and then in industry uh, and internationally really has given me a, a, a great background of just the various areas and sectors and how people position and see things. Same thing here with your business as it relates to how you want to develop that. Is it, um, is it, is, is it a local thing, Miami-Dade? Is it uh, statewide? Um, is it uh, internationally as it relates to where I want to be in the next couple of years? Uh, that is something that we're always uh, taking into consideration and uh, should always be looking at, right? Because sometimes your customers, 
will encourage you all. I wish you had a, a shop over here. I wish you were, you know, expanded over there. And sometimes you may not want to expand, but your industry uh, is mandating you to kind of adjust, right? Uh, again, uh, continuing with this, understanding your market, industry market research uh, can be conducted in person with customers, right? This also, as well, you know, this touch base that we have with our cu uh, customers is a very real thing. You know, uh, there's been a lot of research in the last couple of years as, as it relates to losing touch with our clients and customers, right? Uh, if you put me, do I not leave, right? You know, we're very much dependent on our clientele and uh, a, a screen is nice, but, you know, uh, that engagement with the customer sitting down, uh, you know, breaking bread, if you will, having a cabecito, you know, or a meeting with a client is very much uh, not only an engagement, but also to, you know, there's things that you pick up uh, when you're meeting with uh, that investor, when you're meeting with that potential partner, right? When you're meeting with a potential client that you, otherwise you wouldn't have seen or, or picked up on, right? So uh, areas- And that also, always... um, one, if I may uh, chime in, um, based on these resources, like in terms of the, um, you know, the databases, yes, it's overwhelming to do the research, but don't worry, the Florida SPD CFIU, we have consultants that can guide you to make sure and condense that type of research for your market and the potential clients that you would like to attract for your business. So, you know, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, at the end of today's presentation, I will personally send you an email with the link to go ahead and register for consultation if you're interested or any other assistance for your business needs. Um, like I said, we're family and um, we'll be able to connect you with the appropriate consultant on that side. And, and I think Asus makes a, a really great point here as it relates to the arsenal of people that we have here. And there's a lot of information on the SBDC site uh, that you can find. And then uh, our, our subject matter experts within the various areas and tax and, and uh, uh, you know, loans and, and the business plans that we can help you with. So uh, I'm glad Asus uh, mentioned that. Also too, uh, as you mentioned as well, the presentation will be provided to you. I, we provided you the links there so you can always click and, and get more information, uh, but also do just doing a little Google search. You can find all this on the internet as well. What we try to do is packages for you. Know, so it's all together in one spot, right? Uh, to continue understanding your market, right? You should uh, factor in information such as potential demand, the market size, uh, market competition, economic indicators, location, you know, location, 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 as, uh, as cliche they may sound, it is critical. And we see it more so now here in Miami. Uh, is Miami the place to be? Well, you know, after COVID, you know, we have a lot of people setting up camp here, uh, investment companies, uh, um, you know, financial institutions setting up camp here. Is it the weather? Is, is it uh, uh, the income tax? Is it, uh, is it, the, is it the palm trees, <laughs> right? It's all that, right? And I think we have to be very cognizant of that because we are kind of going into a new era where you don't have to be in, West Lafayette, Indiana, you can be literally anywhere. And uh, if, I'm, if I'm a little biased, you know, why not be in Miami, right? So that is an opportunity, I think, for many of you, because you're going to be meeting uh, clientele from literally all over, right? The Midwest, you know, the West Coast, uh, uh, in, if not the Americas, and Europe, right? Uh, very much a big area here. And the market size, I think, is, is whatever you want it to be, right? If you think about how you grow a company, are you invest in a company, the outreach and the marketing that you provide? Is it on the internet? Is it, uh, is it all things considered? Is something that you can really kind of uh, grow your company, right? Uh, which then leads into uh, potential demand and in economic indicators, right? Uh, developing a business model, right? Uh, two key elements for, of a business model include the value of the proposition, right? And then go to market strategy. Uh, again, we talked a little bit about the business plan and strategy, right? But as it relates to the value proposition, is a clear and compelling statement on what a unique value your company brings to the market. We can help with this, right? You know, writing is such a critical thing. Technical writing, I think, is even more important. The way we write, the way we communicate, right? Uh, not a bunch of googly got, but getting to the point and being very precise in your ideas and your strategies, right? That the client, the customer uh, can follow, right? Because not everybody uh, maybe speaks English or maybe has a different background, right? So making it as uh, simple as pie and uh, delivering something uh, in its core, uh, you know, simplicity is, is something that is difficult, I, I think, really to uh, communicate because, you know, you kind of have to tear away all the busyness, right? And keep it to its core. And that is an art. 
And I think that's what makes, you know, a successful company very successful and other companies just, ah, okay companies, right? So that's something I think we, 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 we can help uh, here at SBDC and, and to really help you uh, grow. Uh, uh, go to market uh, strategy and your step-by-step roadmap by getting a product and service to its customers. Soup the nuts, you know, I, our team really helps us uh, help, will help you kind of implement that as it relates to, you know, a business plan, you know, strategies of, you know, potential partners. Uh, lending institutions, uh, you know, both institutional and, and also to, you know, mom and pop and, and you know, uh, Uncle Uncle Juan, if you will, right, uh, that can help you kind of implement and give you those ideas of how to go about this, right? Uh, of course, again, as Jesus mentioned, you know, we, we, you know, we have a lot of links here, a lot of information. Part of this, you know, is not to drown you by links, but you know, doing your due diligence, right? Doing your your, your deep dive, right? Um, we can help uh, uh, queue it up, but as it relates to, you know, learning more, uh, you know, I, I would encourage you to do this, you know, business models, business uh, propositions, right? If you're uh, a big, uh, uh, I think one of the model entrepreneurs, you know, is Mark Cuban, you know, if you've, if you've read some of his, you know, things and, and on the internet and interviews, uh, doing your due diligence, doing your work, right, and, and doing your homework, right. He, you know, when uh, got into coding, started learning how to code on his on his own. You know, took economics courses on his own. You know, doing the due diligence, doing the hard work up front, right. Not having somebody do it for you and spoon food, uh, spoon feed it to you, but actually understanding the marketplace, understanding you know what's challenging, what uh, uh, you know what the industry how it's evolving, right. And that is kind of, you know, taking the time to really get smart and literate, you know, and, and understanding the lexicon of a particular business that you may already know. But again, if the if the business is profitable, it's ever growing. So I think these are things that you have to take in consideration. Uh, business planning 101, uh, many potential entrepreneurs lose track when it comes to drafting their business ideas into a business plan, right? Uh, with anything, with everything, you know, we get caught up in just the, the hubbub, right, as it relates to finding people and, um, you know, funding, you know, and but also to going back every once in a while, looking at the business plan and saying, am I in Mark? Am I actually uh, uh, where I'm supposed to be, right? It's something sometimes that people lose track of, but, you know, uh, here at SBDC, we can always help you with that as it relates to a plan, a strategy, right? and provide you a link a little later as it relates to a spreadsheet, as it relates to the inputs that you can put in the business plan. And uh, uh, when you're doing your financials as well as it relates to how to plan these things out. Uh, business plan is also mandatory for taking uh, with bankers and investors, right? You know, uh, for the ones, you know, starting out, you know, well, fine, I don't have time for a business plan. I would invest uh, and data you that is critical, right? Because if you're going to go to investors, right, they want to see that you have some sort of thought process, a competent plan, a strategy, right? That's usually in a, in a business plan, right? We take this to investors, we take this to bankers, uh, showing, look, this is what I've come up with. This is the strategies and a PowerPoint deck. Is it an executive summary? Well, it's all that, right? A, a graphic il illustration, a two-page glossy, it's all that, right? To con convey the message, right? Because uh, the difficult thing sometimes is to take that thought here and put it onto paper and then deliver it and package it to uh, potential clients, right? And that everybody can um, understand, right? Also to writing a business plan, uh, we also provide you a link to the uh, model canvas, uh, which we will provide you a link to as well. But it's a great way of uh, inputting these inputs as it relates to um, key partnerships, activities, propositions that uh, uh, you put these inputs in the model canvas and it helps you populate all of this, right? The links are, are the ones that are, are followed. Uh, and again, all this will be provided to you so you can always go back and click on the links and get a little bit more information um, wherever you see fit, right? Uh, writing a business plan, uh, when you're ready to write your business plan and understand a good plan is tailored uh, to your specific audience, right? Doing the deep dive, right, as it relates to who am I selling to, right? This is, uh, you can't spread this like peanut butter, right? You have to be very tactical and very specific as it relates to first, these are the people I'm trying to hit up, right? These are the people I'm trying to focus on. This is where the need is, right? And then, you know, you can, you know, conquer and expand later. Uh, but again, you're filling a gap. Is it a, is it a service? Is it a, is it a good? Well, it's all that. These are things that we have to take in consideration, right? 
Uh, your plan will be similar uh, elements of the Fortune 500 companies, right? Uh, but it's not as complex, right? Uh, use your executive summary to catch the reader's interest and draw potential partners, bankers, and investors, right? The executive summary, ladies and gentlemen, I would argue is critical, right? You can have a business plan, you know, 50, 60 pages, right? You can go really deep, right? And, uh, you know, you can have it indexed and you can have all kinds of, you know, go to page 32, uh, 55, right? But, you know, because of time, right, it's always best to summarize that in the executive summary, a two-page glossy, maybe just a one page as it relates to, this is what I'm doing, this is where I am, this is what I need, right? And then you can elaborate and communicate to the investor or the financial institution what you need is, right? But kind of going specifically uh, in, into those areas, I think will help you kind of uh, better illustrate and demonstrate to the client, uh, the investor, uh, what the need is and, and where you're going. Again, a couple more uh, links as it relates to writing a business plan, right? Uh, uh, you know, www, you know, especially our SBDC site has a multitude of information that, that you can just uh, get. Uh, but these are some, some quick ones that you can go and look at uh, and compare, right? Uh, financing, of course, uh, the first step is to make a list of all the purchases you will need to make in order to stop, uh, start operating, right? So, you know, and it's literally in the back of a napkin as it relates to, okay, what do I need, right? And we start categorizing your list into expenses uh, that are sometimes one-time uh, one time purchases, right? You know, you're not going to repeat buying them over and over again, uh, or ongoing payments that you're going to have to make, right? Uh, and this kind of does uh, a, a slew of areas, right? As it relates to the first step will be to calculate those expenses is it brick and mortar, old school kind of, you know, um, uh, storefront uh, services, right? As it relates to here in, in Miami that we're known for um, the, the hospitality, you know, this, uh, this industry that uh, is very much rich uh, and what we're known for. And then the online component too, and we learned that quickly because a lot of the companies that did not have an online platform uh, quickly learned that in, the, in order to survive during COVID, you needed that online platform that a lot of people did not have, right? And they quickly had to turn over, you know, um, to hire somebody to do a website or quickly learn to, you know, set up uh, and sell their items, right? Because they couldn't meet with people, right? So that becomes a, a very big thing that a lot of people don't understand. Uh, financing as it relates to depending on your business uh, strategy and category, start with a list of expenses uh, you anticipate on having and launching in your business, right? And this can be a slew of different things, right? As it relates to the office space or the lack of office space sometimes that we're, we're experiencing, right? Uh, or the repurposing of a room, right? Sometimes uh, because you're working from home, right? You have to kind of uh, take your living arrangements and set them up uh, in an office space, right? Uh, inventory, equipment, licenses, right? Depending on uh, if you're in the hard trades, right? Getting licensed by the county. Uh, are you a minority firm, right? There's, you know, there's certain things that you have to apply for, you know, insurances, of course, and then salaries of, you know, what you're playing, uh, maybe a staff of one or two people, or maybe a dozen, right? And then also to estimating how these expenses will cost, breaking them into one-time expenses, right? That we have to take in consideration, right? And then when you start that, you start calculating the various startup costs, right? The estimate of profits, you know, conducting break-even analysis, uh, securing loans, you know, attracting investors, right? It's a slew of areas that we kind of progress into, right? Uh, again, all this will be provided to you and, you know, with a lot more detail. But these are things that at least you should start, start thinking about, right? I mentioned the uh, the SBA website as it relates to the spreadsheet uh, that you can uh, uh, kind of click on. If you click on this link, uh, it takes you to that little spreadsheet on the right hand side, right? And it's really great because you can kind of enter the various categories that you see there, and it's uh, it's, a, it's an Excel sheet with all the um, um, uh, that's already set up for you. So you can just put the numbers and chug and plug, right? Uh, but all the codes are in there, so you know, looking at expenses, looking at you know. Um, rent, you know, these sorts of things that uh, you need to consider uh, when operating a business, right? Uh, sources of capital, uh, now that uh, you've calculated the startup expenses, it is time to consider how to fund your venture, right? Um, you know, for most businesses, uh, bootstrapping is the best way to fund as it retains ownership or control over the direction of the business, right? 
And this is, you know, as we move into the financing component, right? You know, where do I go? Well, it depends, right? There's various areas that you can go, right? Of course, we'd like for you to start with us, you know, the SBA, SBDC, you know, here we, we can uh, connect you with uh, loans and, and grants and opportunities with economic development agencies and so on and so forth, right? Uh, but also to, you know, friends and family, you know, as it relates to uh, mission-based uh, lenders uh, that actually uh, help you um, with businesses uh, in investment. Uh, uh, tr tr your traditional banking uh, institutions for uh, financing, uh, cr crowdfunding, angel investors, of course, if, if, if you can find these folks, which uh, has changed in this area too, because we have a lot of startup companies here. Uh, the technology side of it has really kind of been starting here, right? Uh, you, see, you see this with cryptocurrency, you see this in all kinds of things that have not been traditionally in our backyard, but uh, you know, Wall Street has become has become really our main street down here, right? Because of the financial institutions sitting up uh, camp here with all the venture capitalists, uh, which is a great thing for us, right? And then uh, launching the business, right? As it relates to the final step, will be take uh, take the steps to incorporate, right? Uh, and again, you know, once we uh, sit down with you and, and get the, a better idea of what your needs are we can walk you through uh, the various areas as it relates to is it a sole proprietorship, right? A partnership, a corporation. The most popular one is, is since some of you may already know, is the LLC, right? Limited liability company, right? Which offers protection to the owner and personal liability to any of uh, the debts and business in, incurs, right? Uh, that is the most popular one right now in, in the in area uh, for startups and, and uh, for businesses that you're, you know, getting a, a better sense of the industry and, uh, are not fully committed yet, but want to start, I think that's a, a great way of getting into it, right? Launching for your business, right, as it relates depending on your product and service and industry, certain business structures have advantages, right? Um, like anything else, you know, it is just not Miami, but depending, uh, you know, what, how it is structured in this area, right, as it relates to uh, personal liability, taxes, right? You know, because of, um, Florida is a, is, a, is a friend of business, if you will, and it's encouraged, right? We have a lot of entrepreneurs that set up camp here, right? And that lends itself to a very different slew of, 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 of uh, actors, if you will, uh, both in the uh, lending side and then uh, startup business, right? So it's a great area. You can find more information uh, and a chart of uh, comparing general traits and structures at our site, uh, which I've linked down there for you as well. Uh, of course, SunBiz, state of Florida, for you to operate here, you should first search uh, in your business name is available. You know, this is easy enough going to the uh, uh, sunbiz.org site. Uh, and you can quickly just uh, Google, well, not Google, but SunBiz, uh, a, 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 your name of the company. See, first, if somebody has it, right? Uh, and, uh, and, and if they do, you know, well, you know, keep searching as it relates to something that you don't have. But you know, this is a good way of looking uh, also to if, if, the, if there's a market need. Sometimes you'll find businesses that you know almost have thousands of the same business ideas that you have, right? Or sometimes you might be in a unique situation where there's there's nothing there. So the SunBiz uh, site has a lot of good information there too, and can help you as it relates to yeah. setting up uh, uh, a website. One, if I may, um, hey. also it's strong, um, it's strongly encouraged to just do your research first on the business name, because oftentimes some of our clients, they create the website first. Oh. And then the name is already taken on some things. So it's really, you know, time is money. Yeah. So also do a due diligence, make sure that there is no similar business name, because you're not sure what's the business ethics of that previous business. Yeah. So you don't want the connotation, you know, obviously it's about branding and perception. So by doing the due diligence and doing appropriate research, um, that will be the best alternative, you know, the best plan of attack or route for your business venture. You know, I, I think Jesus makes a, a, a really good point here. I think sometimes we get so excited and, and encouraged and, you know, you know, we're, we're printing out business cards, you know, we're, we're printing out flyers or we're building a website. And then <laughs> the key area, like Jesus mentioned, you know, listen, Go to the SunBiz site. Make sure somebody doesn't have that same name uh, because you you've already invested you know maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars 
and you know items that otherwise you may have to trash because somebody has taken your name or like as you said maybe that name is wasn't used in the best context right as it relates to you know that business was not very uh, well managed right and now you have it or or people are, are uh, connecting that business to your business so i mean again as we mentioned in the beginning, where right, you want to do your due diligence, right? You got to do your homework, ladies and gentlemen. That, that's there's no other way of doing it but just going deep and, and doing the deep dive and, and seeing what, what's in, in, in the back house, right? Um, but uh, that's an excellent point by Jesus that I, I highly encourage. Uh, and of course, you know, it uh, <laughs> this wouldn't be a partnership without our, our friends in the IRS, right? And you know, uh, as as uh, People think have this kind of you know bad taste uh, in their mouth when it comes to the IRS. They're really partners. They're really partners. They're, they're there to help you and assist us in various ways as it relates to entrepreneurship, setting up uh, these um, uh, or uh, outfits, these organizations, right, and providing you the, the 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 framework, if you will, to set up a company, right. The EIN number, of course, you may have heard of that. That's the employer identification number. This is critical, ladies and gentlemen. You know, uh, Uncle Sam is going to be knocking on your door if you don't have one of these things. But as it relates to, uh, you know, obtaining a business loan, you know, uh, opening up a business account, you know, uh, at a bank, uh, established bank, they're going to ask for that EIN number, right? If you don't have it. Guess what? You know, in theory, you have a business, but you really don't, right? It's not identified by the IRS, right? So we need to be very careful uh, when, uh, again, doing our due diligence, like uh, Jesus mentioned, as it relates to going back making sure it's not in some biz and, uh, and then finding the paperwork as it relates to uh, getting your EIN number, right? As it relates to, so you can apply for those business loans uh, for, and, and get that bank account and, and um, start filing and reporting uh, for your business purposes, right? Because that's something that you'll need to do. <clears throat> also too, uh, additional business resources, you know, uh, there's a lot, right? And if, the big ones, you know, if you're going to, and reverse engineer this. I, I would first start with uh, these several, you know, business planning center. You know, uh, looking at how we go about, you know, planning and, and, and developing this, the Sunbiz starting business website, as I mentioned to you before, a key area to go into, and the SBA business launch guide, right? Kind of a checklist of things that okay, done, done, got this right. Sometimes, uh, you know, we have so many things going on that you know it's always good to kind of go back. And make sure that you you've done you've done your due diligence, right? The the good people at the SBA, SBDC have already provided that for you. These checklists that you can go back and reference, and then the Miami Dade County business website, right? And even doing a deeper dive, right? These SBA, SBDC, you know, uh, looks at Miami Dade County, but also to our, our friends partners at Miami Dade County uh, can provide you links too that pretty much link back to us. But as it relates to there's that alignment, right? And then the state of Florida business regulations to, uh, you know, rules of engagement, if you will, right? How to operate in the state of Florida um, is always good to know. Um, with that, I, I, let me stop here. I know I provided you a lot of information. And again, uh, not to worry, uh, we will provide uh, uh, our information, both my, myself and Jesus. Uh, if you need more information, have more questions about this, right? Uh, the uh, best way to contact us is, you know, uh, visit our website, you know, miamibusinessnavigator.com. Uh, there you find everything that you need. Uh, if you want to get on the horn with us and, and chat with somebody, you know, uh, we do pick up. <laughs> there is somebody at the other line. Uh, so feel free to reach out to us at 305-779-9232. And also to uh, email is always the best way to uh, this way. Uh, you can imagine we get a slew of emails coming in, but you know, if, uh, if you have documents, if you have uh, a business plan or, or something, um, a PowerPoint describing your, your business, that helps us too a lot. Uh, so, you know, when in doubt, email to uh, and just preface, you know, say, you know, like more information from Juan and Jesus on the uh, entrepreneurship presentation that was done. I'm going to be happy to get you more information. Um, again, you know, um, to request a meeting with us, you know, you can always do, uh, scan this barcode. Uh, but again, the information that we provided you as it relates to the email and the number two is enough that you that you'll need to, uh, you know, reach out to us and set up something. But with that, let me stop there and uh, see if there's any questions, concerns. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like, yeah. Know.
Uh, one, I'll, I'll help you out. Um, can you go back to the previous slide for me, please? Yes. For the QR code. There we go. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so so once again, um, in the chat, I also put in the link um, to go ahead and register for consultation along with the QR code. So it's whatever is convenient for you. Also in the chat, my email address is there. So you can send me an email of any upcoming events. How can I assist you? If you want to schedule a meeting with me, um, I'm more than happy and, assist, you know, and, and available to address those challenges and needs that you have. This is, once again, this is a recorded webinar. So I will be more than happy to email you the slides and the recording along with our YouTube channel as well. As we have uh, multiple uh, webinars, presentations from all different policies of uh, small business and sales. So it's a good opportunity for you to have those tools for the toolbox. Lastly, um, if your business is located in Broward, Palm Beach uh, counties, we could definitely assist you. Um, so I encourage you to register in the link below and also introduce to you to the, um, the Florida SDC at Florida Atlantic University. So additional resources for you. And, and then by all means, you know, like anything that we could do to assist you, don't hesitate, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're more than happy to assist you. Thank you, Sue. Uh, uh, I think I said it better. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I just have a question. Yes, um, so in terms of the financial and reporting side of the financing, once the startup is running, what resources do you recommend and what specific documents must be reported for the ledgers? No two businesses are the same in terms of the financing side. So by having one of our business consultants, they could guide you in terms of what is needed, what's not needed, as long as um, you know, just have everything neatly organized. Because at the end of the day, after getting sufficient sales and traction, you have you create that story um, so that you become bankable. Um, to, to, to get the necessary funds for the next phase of the business. Let me see if there's any chat here. Also too, if, you, if, you, if you're not uh, up to for speaking, you can always put something in the chat and we can uh, you know, look at the uh, questions coming into the chat, if you have any that we can answer. And then it's time being as um, as you're thinking and typing up any questions. Um, also in the chat, I put up some of our upcoming events as today, this week is National Small Business Week. So we have a plethora of um, events going on throughout the week. So definitely encourage you to participate. Also uh, tomorrow, we're having a navigator uh, resource fair in which you could definitely meet Juan Flores and myself Along, connecting, along with the other set and six other spokes from the Navigator program. So right there is a good opportunity for you to put a name to your face, what information, resources that they have that could definitely benefit your needs. Um, so like I said, you know, we're family. Anything that we could do to be of assistance, I'm an email and uh, an event a way to help you out. I, I would I, I would highly encourage you to uh, participate in those events the one Jesus mentioned and, and linked at the website. Yep. Perfect. And, uh, and I have one great question that I got. Thank you. Thank All you. of our services is confidential and no cost to you as we're funded through the Small Business Administration. So it's a great opportunity for you to take advantage of the services that we have. Yes. Your tax right. dollars at, at that work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, so from the looks of it, um, we don't have any more questions and comments. Um, everything has been you know, great reviews. I've actually got a few emails from some of our participants. So Juan, you did a great job. Thank you, and, so um, appreciate it. But um, definitely, you know, like we're looking forward to seeing you at our next event. And um, like I said, anything that we could do with our family and looking forward to seeing you at our next event or at the next consulting session. I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar and have a good afternoon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, guys.